My son, like any teenage boy, loves his video games, and he's been begging me to run an Ethernet line directly into his room so that his games will stop lagging. Well, I've avoided it for a couple reasons. Number one, running high-speed internet directly into a teenage boy's room seems like a terrible idea. And number two, I didn't know how to do it. Well, his relentless campaign of pestering me has worked. I have installed the Ethernet jacks, and I gotta tell you, it is easier than I expected. But there are definitely ways you can screw it up that I learned the hard way, so let me walk you through how to run an Ethernet line, how to install network jacks, and the four mistakes that I made so you won't make them yourself. The good news is that whether you're installing CAT5e cable or CAT6 cable, the process is exactly the same. They each have eight wires that go in the same places. I'll let you chase down the rabbit hole of whether CAT5e or CAT6 is the right one for you, but that doesn't really matter. What does matter is whether you get solid core wire or stranded wire. As a general rule, when you're running wires through walls, you generally want solid core wire. These Ethernet cables you have laying around the house that have little clippy things at the end, they're called patch cables. They're almost always stranded wire. So even if you cut the end off of this and separate the wires, it's not gonna work in the Keystone jacks we're installing today. That's the first lesson I learned the hard way. But if this is the only cable you've got, I do have an alternative way to wire this up for you that I'll show you when we get to that point. To install an Ethernet jack, you will need Cat5e or Cat6 network cable, a low voltage old work bracket, a network jack Keystone, and a network jack faceplate. And if you're installing one Ethernet jack, odds are you're also installing another Ethernet jack in another room, so buy two of them when you're there. As for tools, you'll definitely need a wire cutter, a screwdriver, a drywall saw, and a punch down tool, which may or may not be included with the network jacks you purchase. Depending on where you're running the cable, you may also need a drill, a wire fish line, ladder, headlamp, extra life insurance, etc. The first step in this process is to figure out how the heck you're gonna get the Ethernet cable from one room to the other. Now this can require some creativity on your part. For me, I'm running it out through my office wall here, into the garage, up into the garage attic, through there and into my son's bedroom. Man, that sounds worse every time I say it. Anyway, once you have a plan for the cables, you can figure out exactly where you wanna put the jacks in each room. Then use a stud finder to find a gap between the wall studs to cut a hole for each jack. Mark the wall using the low voltage bracket you plan to install, which is probably a lot easier if you don't have jungle wallpaper. Then cut out the drywall. I use a multi-tool here, but a drywall saw works just fine. Just be careful as you cut, you never know if there's a wire or a pipe in there to surprise you. That's the second lesson I learned the hard way on a different project. With the hole cut, install the old work low voltage bracket by screwing it in so the tabs grip the drywall. Now why is this called an old work bracket if it's designed for new projects? Because the more they can confuse you in doing an electrical project, the more likely you are to hire somebody, and that's more money for them. Once you have the brackets installed, you can run your network cable from room to room. Leave a couple feet of wire hanging out of the wall, then cut the cable. Now it's time to wire up your keystone jack. Start by stripping a few inches of the sheath off the cable. There are handy tools for this, but the wire cutter does the job. Next, separate and untwist the cables. If you're using CAT6 cable, you'll need to cut off the spline as well. That's really the only difference. Now to get the wires in order. You'll notice that the jack is conveniently color-coded to help you get the wires in order. But there are two standards for wiring, T56A and T56B. Again, this is just part of their scheme to confuse you, all right? It doesn't matter which standard you use, as long as you use the same one on both sides of the cable. The B standard is the most common, so just stick with that, and it looks like this. Carefully line up the wires to their appropriate slots, leaving the wire twist as close to the connection points as possible. And make sure you have the white orange and the white brown in the right slots. They look a lot alike. That's lesson three that I learned the hard way. With the wires lined up, use the punch down tool to push each wire firmly into place. Like I said, my jacks came with their own crappy little punch down tool, but you may have to purchase one on your own. If you're wiring up a bunch of these jacks, you probably wanna purchase a better tool too. With all the wires punched in place, cut off the excess wire and snap on the cover. And look at that, your first wired Ethernet Keystone wall jack. Take a moment to bask in your glory, then snap the jack into the faceplate. Tuck the remaining wire into the wall and screw the faceplate into place. And you're done. Well, you should probably clean up after yourself and you probably need to install another jack in the other room. But after that, you're done. Now connect the jack to the router in one room and connect it to a computer in the other room and check out that awesome wired speed. Of course, there's a chance you'll plug it in and get zero speed, in which case you're done messed up. But here's some things you can check to make sure you wired everything correctly. First are the wires in the same order on each jack. Take a photo with your phone. It just makes it a lot easier than trying to remember. Second are the wires in each slot punched down all the way. Different jacks use different punch tools, and if you use the wrong style, it may not create a solid connection. Third, are you sure your modem works? That's lesson four I learned the hard way. And finally, are you sure that your cable you're using is solid core wire and not stranded wire? Because stranded wire will fit in the slots and it's gonna look connected, but the blades will not cut all the way through the insulation, so it will not make a connection. 
If that's the case, you're gonna have to run a whole new solid core wire from room to room, or you can get one of these female to female inline couplers. Add an RJ45 connector at the end of the cable, snap it in, and you're good to go. And if you wanna learn how to add one of these connectors to your ethernet cable, check out this video right here. Thanks for watching.